So today we're taking a look at drainage density. So we're going to be looking at things like infiltration, runoff, permeability. And I know they all might sound tricky, but I promise we'll break it down nice and easy. So let's first take a look at the exam definition of drainage density. So drainage density is the total length of all the streams in relation to the size of the drainage basin that it will drain. So essentially it's the comparison of the total length of the streams to the size of the drainage basin that it drains. So as you can see, we have three different types of drainage density. We have low, medium and high. So if we take a look at the diagram on the left, we can see that that's going to represent the low drainage density. And this drainage pattern is just going to have a few streams in a large area. And water is not going to flow all over the place, right? It's mostly going to soak into the ground. So now if we look at the diagram in the middle, that's going to represent your medium drainage density. And this one is going to show a moderate number of streams that are going to be evenly spread out. Now that's going to represent, uh, you know, a balance of water soaking into the ground and your water that's going to be flowing on the surface. So if we take a look at the diagram, that's going to be all the way to the right. That's going to represent your high drainage density. And this drainage pattern is going to have a lot of streams that are going to be packed together in a small area. So now let's take a look at your low drainage density in deeper detail. So the first characteristic is going to say that there are a few streams per unit area. So that means that the land is not going to have a lot of rivers or streams that are going to be close together. They are going to be quite far apart. So the next characteristic is going to say that it usually occurs in areas with permeable soils. Now examples of permeable soils would be sandy soils. And these permeable soils are going to allow more infiltration and less runoff. So let's break this point up, right? So permeable soils are going to be soils that let water pass through them. And obviously an example would be sandy soils. Now infiltration is when water is going to enter the ground, right? Simple. Runoff is going to be when water flows over the land because it can't soak in. So just remember these three keywords because I am going to be mentioning them quite often in the video. So the next point states it's going to occur on flat terrain, which is then going to lead to slower runoff. Now on a flat terrain, your water is going to move slowly and it's going to have more time to soak in instead of running off the surface quickly. So our next point mentions that there's going to be dense vegetation and that's going to reduce your surface runoff. So dense vegetation basically means that your plants are going to grow close together and it's going to cover most of the ground. And these plants are then going to, you know, slow down the water that's flowing and that's going to help it soak into the soil and that's going to further lead to reducing your runoff. So if runoff is low, your infiltration is going to be high. That means that if there's less water flowing on the surface, that means that more water is being soaked into the ground. So now let's take a look at your medium drainage density. So the first characteristic is that there's going to be a moderate number of streams, and that's going to indicate a balance between your infiltration and your runoff. So that's going to mean that some water is going to soak in and some water is just going to flow on the surface, right? There's not going to be too much of either. Our next characteristic states that it's found in areas with moderate slopes, moderately permeable soils and average vegetation cover. So that means that the land is not going to be too steep or too flat. And the soil that will be found on this land will be soil like loam because it is going to let some water in, but not too much. And your average vegetation cover means that there's not going to be too many trees and it's not going to be too bare. So an example would be obviously your um, farmlands or your grasslands. So the first characteristic states that there are many streams in a small area. Now, as you can see in the diagram, there are quite a few streams there. So it usually occurs in areas with impermeable rocks or soils. An example of that would be clay, and that's going to prevent the infiltration. So basically, if it's impermeable, that means that water cannot pass through. Our next characteristic states that it occurs on steep slopes, causing faster surface runoff. Now remember, if your slopes are going to be steep and your land is going to be very slanted, your gravity is going to cause your water to flow down quite quickly. And that's obviously going to lead to a fast surface runoff. So that means that less water has time to soak in. So there's going to be little or no vegetation. Now remember, if there's little or no vegetation, it's going to be bare ground. So think of deserts or rocky areas. Now without plants, there's going to be nothing to slow the water down. So it's just going to run off quickly and that's going to cause more streams to form. 
Now remember, if your runoff is high, that means if a lot, a lot of water is flowing on the surface, your infiltration is going to be low, and that means that very little water is going to soak into the soil. So let's go through that one more time. If there's a lot of water flowing on the surface, then very little water is going to soak into the ground. So runoff is high, infiltration is low. So let's look at some factors that are going to influence drainage density. Now, as you can see in the image, there's only going to be four. However, there are actually nine factors that can influence your drainage density. So let's start off with gradient, right? Now, in order to attain a low drainage density, you're going to have to have a gentle slope. So water is going to move slowly and it's going to infiltrate. That means that water is going to move slowly and it's going to have more time to soak into the soil. And that's going to lead to less runoff and fewer streams. Now, in order to attain a high drainage density, you're going to have to have a steep slope. So water can run off quickly and that's going to form many streams. So when we say that water is going to flow downhill quickly, imagine pouring water on a slide. That's exactly what it's going to be like. And this is then going to cause more runoff and the faster moving water is going to carve out more streams. So next we have porosity. Now, in order to have a low drainage density, you're going to need to have a high porosity. So more pore space for water to infiltrate. So porosity basically means how much of pore space or gaps that there will be in either rock or soil in order for water to enter. Now, when we say high porosity, we actually mean that there's going to be a lot of pore space in order for water to enter into the ground. Now, in order to have a high drainage density, you're going to need to have a low porosity. So that means there's going to be less pore space and more runoff. So low porosity is going to mean fewer gaps in soil and that's going to mean less space for water to enter. So more of it is going to run off the surface. Now we look at permeability. Now in order to have a low drainage density, you need to have a high permeability so that water can easily soak in. Now, an example of soil with high permeability would be sandy or gravel soils because these soils are going to have gaps or spaces between the particles. And that means that water can easily pass through so it infiltrates into the ground instead of actually running off. Now, in order to have a high drainage density, you're going to need to have a low permeability. So, examples of soils with low permeability will be your clay or rock. And that's because these soils are going to be tightly packed and it's going to make it hard for water to soak in. And in doing so, that's going to lead to more runoff on the surface. Now, in terms of soil moisture, in order to have a low drainage density, you're going to need to have dry soils because your dry soils can absorb more water because remember the pores are going to be empty and that's going to lead to less runoff. However, in order to have high drainage density, you can need to have saturated soils that are already going to be full of water. Now think of a soaked sponge, right? It's going to be full of water and it can't absorb any more. So because it can't absorb any more, the water is just going to run off easily and that's going to increase your stream formation. So one of the main factors will be precipitation or rainfall. Now in order to have a low drainage density, you can need to have either low or moderate rainfall. Because remember, if there's less water that's falling on the land, there's going to be less surface runoff and there's going to be more infiltration. Because think about it, there's going to be such a small amount of water that's falling that the ground can just easily absorb it, right? So more infiltration is going to happen. So in order to have a high drainage density, you're going to need to have a high rainfall. Because remember, if a lot of water falls at once, the soil can't absorb it, you know, fast enough. And streams are then going to develop quickly because the extra water is going to then flow away and that's going to form more channels. So in terms of vegetation, right? Now, in order to have a low drainage density, you need to have your dense vegetation. So that means that you need to have a lot of plants, grass and trees because you need to remember interception is then going to happen. So what that means is your leaves are going to catch the rain and that's going to slow the water down because the water is then going to drip gently onto the soil. And that's going to give it more time to soak in and therefore it's going to promote infiltration. In order to have high drainage density, you're going to need to have sparse or no vegetation. So there's not going to be any plants to stop or slow down the rain. And once your water is going to hit the ground hard and fast, it's going to cause more surface runoff. So let's take a look at temperature and evaporation. Now, in order to have a low drainage density, you're going to need to have high evaporation, which is going to reduce the surface water and that's going to lead to less runoff. 
because you need to remember that high temperatures are going to cause more evaporation which is going to remove the water from the surface before it can even flow into any streams and the result of that is going to be less runoff. However, in order to have a high drainage density, you need to have low evaporation rates, which means you need to have low temperatures because remember your water is then going to stay on land longer and it's more, more likely to run off into streams. That means that if you have low temperatures or evaporation, there's going to be more runoff and a higher drainage density. So let's look at the rock type. So in order to have a low drainage density, you can need to have permeable rock, right? And permeable rock will be rocks that are going to allow water to pass through it. So examples of these rocks will be sandstone, limestone, and these are going to promote infiltration. In order to have a high drainage density, you're going to need to have impermeable rock. So that's rock that does not allow water to pass through it. So examples would be granite or shale. And remember, if the water is not going to pass through it, it's going to flow over the surface and that's going to lead to more runoff. And the last factor will be human activity or land use. Now, in order to have low drainage density, there's going to be a need for natural or forested land because if there's going to be lots of vegetation and soil, that's going to absorb water. And by absorbing the water, you're going to reduce your surface runoff and that's going to lead to a lower drainage density. However, in order to have a high drainage density, it needs to occur in urban areas because remember there's concrete, there's roads, there's pavements, and all these buildings are going to be impervious surfaces. That means that water cannot flow through it. And if water cannot soak into it, this is going to cause your water to run off quickly and that's going to increase your drainage density with more streams and drains. And that's it for today, guys. I want to thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you found this video helpful, then please give it a like. And stay tuned because I have many more videos coming. And I'm always here to make learning easier for you. So stay cool, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.